Okay, I went into Guitar Center the other day to trade in a Taylor 214 CE, which was a Haas to play. Sounded great, but it was a Haas to play. And I was going to order a used Eastman uh, and turn in that Taylor 214. And they had this just right there on the in the acoustic room on a stand. PRS SE. A50E, they need better names for these acoustic guitars than this alphabet soup. Sounds like the government or the IRS made the guitar or something. But anyway, I picked it up, and it played great. It comes in a case. Let's look at it a little closer. Uh, it's got <clears throat> Okay, we're going to try a couple things out here. First thing, um, this guitar is really even. <clears throat> um, it's got a little bit of a factory feel. But you know what? I'd rather have that than a guitar that won't stay in tune and has cruddy action. And this guitar is an excellent... Uh, look at here. You can play down here. The intonation on it is just uh, impeccable. Now watch this. I'm going to go up to the 12th fret and play some bar chords. Those, are, those would have been impossible to do, I think, on that... Uh, 214 CE the way at least that's a that's an E minor on the 12th fret you know and the strings are just so even now I think the evenness of the strings might make some people might say the the bass strings are a little bit uh, a little bit flat but uh, not flat uh, intonation wise but just uh, they don't they don't pop out at you but you know what? The action in terms of playability and intonation, which are really important, sound great. Let's see. There's an E minor. I believe, what's that, an A minor? Then we got a B minor up here. Look at that. Intonation's just spot on. Here's an E minor here. E minor here. Here. There's those bass notes. I don't think they sound too bad. I read several people didn't like the bass notes. I think they sound fine. Um, you know, these are 12s on here. Now, the 12s on that Taylor 214 CE were just, I mean, it, it had a big fat sound, but it was, it really was hard to play. And I've had several Taylors. Um, and this thing uh, is easy to play, and it's got 12s on it, and I think it sounds good. I mean, it's not like you're, you're giving up all this. Uh, it's got a Sitka spruce top, and. <laughs> That's colorful. I don't know if I would have picked that color out, but you know what? I actually walked out of there uh, coming out ahead in the trade because uh, this was about eight hundred bucks. And uh, but those sides are laminated maple, which is fine. Um, I'll tell you what uh, the this really um, the strings are super even. I think that's really precision. This was made in China, I believe, and this is about the third guitar, or uh, probably I've played more, but this is about the third guitar I own that was made in China. And I'll tell you this, um, there's stuff, um, I've never played a bad one. I, everything I've ever played stays in tune, plays great, and sounds fine. So I think you might be hearing more about Chinese guitars. But it's it's a beautiful guitar. I've got no complaints, especially for the money I spent. I wanted this to just kind of plug and play, you know. I just I used to do a lot of Travis picking, but it's been a while.
Comes in a nice case. I'll tell you this, I actually kind of like those Taylor nice fancy gig bags better than cases I've gotten, so I almost prefer those over a hard shell case of some kind. But it does come in a nice hard shell case, and you do need a pretty protective case of some kind for an acoustic guitar. Because that's just wood, you know, and it's the wood's not all that thick, so it's going to bang around. I was pretty happy. I played I played it the other night with the pickup in a little coffee shop. They had a horrible PA. There was a bunch of noise in the room. See, that's why I don't care that much about PAs. There was a or the pickups uh, normally. There was a bunch of uh, noise in the room. They had one of those big loud coffee grinders and people talking. And I was just sitting up there playing old folk songs. And you know what? That PA system, that pickup system, Fishman Sonitone GT1, it worked fine. Worked just fine. The PA, if you're, you know, the PA was, didn't sound that good. But in a room like that, where they're grinding coffee and people are ordering coffee. It wasn't loud like a bar where there's, you know, everybody's half had too much to drink. But it was a noisy room nonetheless. And, yeah, I mean, uh, the nuances of sound uh, were were uh, lost. <laughs> so I was just, just, just fine with how it sounded through that horrible PA they had. I just plugged in. I didn't have to take anything there. And I spent, I spent uh, under $800 for this brand new guitar. In fact, I traded it in that Taylor 214 and I came out ahead. Yeah, let's try a little bit of flat picking. It's got a nice, you know, it's nice for flat picking. Again, I don't think you lose that much on the bass strings. It's just as even as a computer, which is, I think, why it plays so well up here. But you, you also you can flat pick it. said, son, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. So, I do like this guitar. I think it's an excellent little guitar for the money. I'll tell you, PRS... This, um, I don't. I think this uh, SE acoustic is their main acoustic. They haven't made acoustics that long, and they're gonna. They're gonna. Uh, they haven't made acoustics that long, and um, if they start coming out with a, a higher price brand with solid back and sides and things, I think they're gonna give Taylor and Gibson and Martin or, and Gibson a run for their money. As a matter of fact, I would say. If you're just watching this and you're, you're not that familiar with PRS acoustic guitars, I was not that familiar with PRS acoustic guitars, but um, uh, and I don't think they're known for acoustic guitars, and I don't think they're they're electric guitars. They're kind of a new company compared to you know Martin or Fender or Gibson. Anyway, they're a new company, and um, um, I, if they're going into the acoustic market, they're doing it right because this is a good. Uh, plug and play, working man's high quality, affordable acoustic guitar. Let's try a little bit of blues.
try a little bit of blues here. I got the blues, baby. I got them so bad. I got the blues right down in the tippy tippy bottoms of my pinkies. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. And that's why I tell you, I got the blues. I got them bad. I mean, Big strums here. That thing does it all. And it's intonation. Look, you play G, then you play an E. Now that that will often be a tell. Like if you play a G chord and then play an E chord. A lot of guitars with intonation issues, you, you really have to fuss with it. But this one seems might be, I might need to tune it. But th this thing, the intonation on this thing is impeccable. No BS here. It's you can play this thing. You can play it all the way up and down the neck. I love that bird. And like I said, over 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 time, it's not that expensive guitar. Maybe one one thing that'll happen over time, you know, that you won't get the aging of the back and sides wood which a lot of people think adds to the tone and maybe over time it'll start to rattle and shake kind of like a new car you know when you buy a new car they're always so tight and then after you after you get about 80,000 miles they start to feel kind of loose and you can hear things rattle and uh shake when you drive I think acoustic guitars are like that but like a my Martin uh a, a really good guitar will probably be good for a lot longer but, you know, if in five or six years this thing starts to get all loose and kind of rattly, that's from playing it a lot. That's the only way that's going to happen is if you play it all the time. And you know what? If you play this thing every day for six or seven years and it starts to get loose and rattly, you definitely got your money out of it. And you couldn't make any kind of complaint whatsoever. 800 bucks. This is a nice guitar. Thanks. God bless.